This screencast is, is meant to help you learn how to uh, draw marker shapes using Inkscape, which is a free open source uh, vector drawing tool. Uh, begin after you've downloaded uh, Inkscape by opening up Inkscape and, and uh, loading an image that you're going to want to use as the basis of your, of your drawing. In this case, it's a, it's a lily that I got from the web somewhere, so I load it and put it in and the resolution of it really doesn't matter much it's really there just to guide your drawing on the right you can see uh, that that the uh, menu shows which one I've got uh, in there in this case an image and I'm locking it so that it doesn't move around the next thing I want to do is set the the color of, of the of the stroke so I right click on the color and then select uh, set stroke to set the color that I want to use. I, I typically use red because it shows up against everything. Next step you want to pick a pen uh, and, the, and the pen the pen tool gives you options to to draw uh, and you, you click your first dot and then as you go through uh, you click and hold down when you want to go around a curve or if you just click you'll get straight lines in between each, each time you, you click. And uh, you can see it basically has a line and then a hand, which we call handle, uh, to two uh, Bezier handles, uh, those round dots that control the shape of the curve. Now, the closer the, the, the dots are to the, to the square dot, um, okay, and you can see that the, the path showed up in our, in our list, and uh, we want to change the transparency of that interior fill uh, so that it's transparent so we can see through it and that'll help in the drawing process. Now we're going to go through and edit this this path and so I click on on a, uh, a square dot which is which is the the anchor to the to the thing and get them in the right place and then uh, adjust the uh, the little dots uh, the round dots to, to adjust the curve so it fits uh, exactly what I'm trying to do. So um, you can see as I as I move it, it moves, and you'll you'll get a feel for it after a while. It, it, it's a little alien in the beginning, but uh, it, it starts to make sense after a while. Uh, now here in this case, I I hit the curve by accident, and it uh, it 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 made the the curve all squirrely. So I just hit Control Z, which is undo. You can do that almost in any situation, and that undoes the last thing you did, and that gets me back to where I was. Um, now I'm, I'm moving this around, and I think the shape is pretty good at this point. Um, let's, uh, and we can go on to, to doing the next one. So I go back and, and select the pen tool again, and now I'm going to draw that little cusp inside the, the thing. Um, and if you notice, I, I, I'm not going to be drawing it uh, exactly, and, and particularly on the side that, that that meshes into the other shape, I just put lines there because I'm going to just cut that out later. I'm not going to actually draw that because there'd be no way to match that line, and they have to match up perfectly uh, uh, to do marquetry. So now I'm going to finish the curve. I click on the beginning dot. It ends. Now you can no you notice that it's darker. Uh, where, it, where it, uh, it overlaps, and th that gives me a good clue. That's why the, the transparency is good. Uh, and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to edit it uh, so that it, it matches, but I'm not going to worry about that little uh, straight piece at the end. I'm just use that to cut off, and I'll show you how, how I do that in a second. Um, but, uh, but I, um, so I basically have two shapes now, and I'm going to subtract one from the other. So First thing I do is I go to the edit menu and I duplicate that shape and notice the shape underneath. This is the one I'm going to use as a template to cut it out because I want to cut the round thing against the square one. Um, and you can see everything gets darker because there are two copies of it there. Now I'm going to select them both and in the path menu I do difference. And that gives me the difference between the two shapes and it will cut that out of there. And so let, let's see what happens when we do that. So we do difference and now cut it out. And now uh, there, there are two shapes on here and I'll, I'll pull it out temporarily just so you can see it. Um, I'll go to select and th then I can just drag it. And, and now if I pull it out, you can see I've got the shape one perfectly cut out from the other. And we're basically gonna do this for the whole 
all the parts of the flower. And then I did undo to undo the whole thing. Uh, next step is we're going to do that center piece. So I moved the, the, it over. Uh, I pressed the, the mouse button, uh, the uh, scroll mouse's scroll button, and essentially go through the same trick that I did before. Drawing a dot, pulling out the, the handles to make the, the, the dot uh, to make the, the anchor dot stretch over and that one right I did right there that's just a a uh, where I just clicked I wanted a, a, a very sharp corner between the two of them and so you basically are playing between the two now I, I click on the on the initial dot and it comes up and and you can see that where they overlap it's darker so I know I have an overlap but I don't really care right now because I'm going to cut one away from the other so now again, I'm going to edit the, the, the shape so that it matches uh, what I want uh, by, by pulling the dots away or moving the, the, square, uh, the squares to where they should be. And uh, that's starting to look pretty good. And now I'm going to uh, uh, do the same process of cutting it away. So I, uh, I highlight one of the shapes. I duplicate it now control D does this also but you don't have to know that right now you'll learn it eventually and, and it, your muscle memory will take over um, and then I, I select them both and I do again path difference okay now so I kind of messed up here because I actually selected the wrong one uh, but it doesn't really matter for the sake of argument here so now I pull it away and it looks looks okay uh, so I've got two shapes and they mesh perfectly and that's the, the even though it wasn't the actual shape I really wanted to select that the main one and cut the other one from that, but it doesn't really matter. I guess I'm going to go through and essentially do all the other pieces now uh, so uh, uh, Same idea um, Now I'm going to cut the So now I added another piece and I cut it away from the rest of it. Uh, so that's that top piece. And now I'm going to go through and essentially draw the, the piece on the left. Same exact uh, concept. And this, this is the, once you learn this, this is 90% of what you need to learn for in uh, Inkscape. There isn't a whole lot more uh, about what the way we use Inkscape. Although it's, there's a lot there, but it doesn't really matter for us. Okay. So now I'm going to have to basically, I'm going to edit it and then cut out the two uh, pieces where it overlaps and continue on to the other one. I did that one. I'm doing this kind of in real time, you know, like, like a baking show. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with all the doing it for each one, although it didn't take very long. The whole thing in real time took maybe 20 minutes at, at worst. Now here I made, intentionally made a mistake. Because I want to show you how I how I can delete uh, one of the points. So now we put in there. See, I've got that point there. What I do is I highlight it, and then hit the delete key, and it'll go away. And now I edit it just like I did all the other ones. Um, and and cut the. I'm going to have to cut away two pieces that that. Uh, that piece on the top, the top of it, and piece on the bottom of it, and and uh, the same way I've been doing it, so that they all match up perfectly, and they're all completely independent. Okay, so now, um, so now, now I duplicate that one, and then duplicate, and then select the other one, cut, cut it, cut it away. Uh, duplicate that one, select both, and cut it away, and I just have to do that last one. And, and then it's all done. Now, occasionally you'll get these kind of straight lines when you cut them away. This is, I think, a bug in, in Lightscape. But if you see a line like that, it just means that the, that the control points for the last point are just off and you basically just move them in. Um, the, and then it, it'll start look, to look good. Now, I didn't do the, you know, the, the, the little parts inside the flower just for the sake of time. Okay, so now we've made this, this thing. And now what I want to do is I want to draw some lines in there uh, that are going to be engraved on top of the pieces. And this, uh, and this, I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to do it the drawing way. Uh, so, so now I made it blue, uh, so I can see a differentiation. 
and, th and these are going to be engraved on top. And in this case, I want to get rid of the fill. So I go up to the, uh, uh, that menu up there, and in the fill, I cut it, I say no fill. So fill, and then X. So now it's just a line. And I'm going to do this a couple times. And, and these are going to just draw, uh, uh, and, and when I uh, render it on the laser, I'm going to uh, run that faster so it doesn't cut all the way through, uh, and basically just engraves the Okay, now uh, uh, look, there's another way to do this rather than than with, with the with the pen tool, and there's the drawing tool, which works much better uh, for this kind of thing. So I click that one below the pen, basically draws a smooth curve, like you're drawing anywhere. So I just add it, and it see how it fills in the curve nicely, and puts it in. And this is much faster for doing this kind of thing. Okay, I think this is pretty much done. So I'm going to save it. So go to the file menu and hit save. Uh, and give it a name. I'm going to call it Lily, I think. And now we've got an SVG file that we could use uh, to run the laser. But before I run the laser, I want, want to run a pre-visualization tool. That, that I've created um, to make this easy. So so on the website, uh, uh, marketplace.com, uh, there's a visualizer and basically you load the, the SVG file in and you can see what it looks like with the veneers. So I'm gonna load in the file I just made and there it is. And that's what it looks like. Uh, it, it, the visualizer just uses it. Uh, black line. So I'm going to go through each one and I can basically pick a veneer for each one. And in this case, I'm going to go with cherry and uh, and I click on it and I can put it in there. Now I'm, I can change the grain rotation uh, for each one. I always forget which way to go, whether it's 45 is that, yes, that's the wrong way, but works for that one. And that one should be like 135 degrees. Anyway, go through and and fill it in. I could and it, I could try different woods, could try all different kinds of things. And on this kind of, this case, I didn't really need to pre-visit it uh, because I could have guessed what it was going to look like. Uh, now for those under things, I'm going to change it to bloodwood because um, that that makes a darker shadow for the underside. But but it could be anything. Uh, and then you can keep trying these things and, and see what what goes on. So now the piece is done. Uh, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, this whole process, uh, you, can, you can get the book on Amazon. It's called Painting with Light, A Guide to Marquetry and Inlay. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye.